Any views or opinions expressed on KUR are not necessarily those of Kutztown University, Kutztown University Student Government, Kutztown University Student Services Incorporated, KUR staff and management or other affiliated organizations. I'm Steve Majiri, host of KU Live. Tune in every Tuesdays at 2 p.m. for all things Kutztown University. We will discuss everything ranging from school news, sports, and upcoming events, along with frequent appearances from student government to discuss new policies. We will also have members of ACE, the Association of Campus Events, to come in weekly to discuss what new activities are coming to the university. Tune in to 1670 AM or listen to us online at www.kutztown.edu slash KUR or on your smartphone by downloading the TuneIn app. You can also listen to us via any phone by calling 610-465-7860. KUR, the radio voice of Kutztown University. KUR, the radio voice of Kutztown University. KUR, Kutztown. Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of KU Live. The time right now is about 2.03 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm your host, Steve Majiri. We have a great show for you here today. And we're going to start out with uh, with some football. We have Coach Clements in here to talk about the big game this Thursday against Westchester. Thank you for coming on the show, Coach. Sure thing. Great to have you, and we appreciate you coming on such sh- on such short notice. Uh, now, um, you said before the show that this is you know your first time you've had really a Thursday game in your coaching tenure. Um, what adjustments do you have to make in such a short week? Well, we you know we had to get right after our game against Millersville, and we had the kids out on Sunday. Um, we usually give the kids off on Monday during the week. Um, you know, you have to give them one day off per week, so. So we uh, practiced on Monday. We did a typical Tuesday practice. Today is Tuesday, and we'll practice like a typical Wednesday during the week. And then our our Thursday practice will be more of a you know helmets and walk through tomorrow. So we will lose a day of practice. And um, but you know we're all focused in. We're we're ready to go. It should be an exciting environment and an exciting game. For, oh, for sure. I can't wait to see it. A lot of the guys also have been telling me they've kind of been focused on Westchester, even from last week, because of how it, there's just such a really great game and a great rivalry. So what's the tempo been like in practice and preparing them for such a two, not one, but two tough games coming up? Yeah, I mean, we're, you know, we're trying at this point, you know, with a short turnaround, you try to, it's more of a mental focus and, and, and uh, concentration. Um, we're running around and being physical, but at the same time, you got to watch and Watch the athletes. You don't want to lose their legs. You know, um, we're going to need them on Thursday night for sure. Right. You don't want to. I remember, Sam is always telling. Dugan's always telling me how he's always, you know, sore, and I'm sure he's got. A, he's probably having a nice bath every day this week. Now, um, another thing we have to mention is that your defense, uh, these astounding numbers, 184 total yards of offense, seven points allowed over the last two games. How has the defense been able to maintain such a high level of play these past few weeks? Well, you know, I think, um, you know, obviously we've played well in games and we haven't played well in some games. I think when you look at the last two weeks, we haven't given up the big play. Uh, The two losses that we had on the season to date, um, we gave up 28 points of scores over 50 yards, you know, on four plays. And we were able to limit that uh, the last two weeks, which was huge. Um, Except for Millersville, we gave up a 50-yard run in the fourth quarter, which ended up turning into seven points in the fourth quarter there. But I think the kids are just doing a great job getting off the field on third down. Uh, turnovers, too. We were able to force and create a bunch of turnovers against Cheney, um, which obviously helped us, um, gave our offense a short field. And in the Millersville game, we had a couple turnovers as well. So, I mean, that's, that's a big part of what we've been able to do defensively thus far this year. Right. You have to get you have to win the turnover battle. And that's a great thing. Last year, the the – the team had, you know, the offense was very talented, but it's just the defense sometimes had trouble getting off the field. And this, you know, like you said, stopping them on critical downs has been so paramount, and it's led to a much better um, start to the season than last year. And another thing is just on the other side of the ball, your offense has scored 128 points in their last two games. Now, just a stat here, KU has outscored their opponents 128-7 to in the last two games. It's an astonishing number. I can't do that in a video game. How has your offense been able to click so well? Well, I think uh... – I can tell you one thing: uh, our offensive lines has been playing better. Um, we haven't given up a sack, I don't think, in, right. in, a, in a two few. games, three so games. That that helps. Um, I think that's given Chad, you know, some time go through his progressions and making good decisions. We've got a, a bunch of good athletes uh, that we can spread the ball around to, and have all played really well. And um, our running game has really come come alive here in the last two games, um, having such big leads at halftime. 
you know, going into the second half, really put it on the O-line and on the running game to really grind out the clock and, and, and do the job. And, and they've been not only grinding out the clock, but they've been scoring the football. Right, which get, and I believe, yeah, the stat last um, week was three running backs. Terry Williams, Daryl Scott, and James Wild Jr. ran for a combined 322 yards. And that's just amazing. How are you able to establish such a dominant ground game? Well, like I said, I think I think um, the guys up front are, are, are starting to click and, and – you know, um, they're just playing well together. I think uh, all three of those backs you mentioned can give us a different different spark. And uh, when you have fresh legs in there, it makes it easier on the offensive line as well. I mean, the running back starts carrying the ball over and over and over again. When we can throw another guy in there, um, sometimes those guys make the guys up front look good too. Oh, absolutely. So you think you'll be going with the three-headed approach um, going forward? Yeah, I think uh, I think all three guys are very capable. Um, well, you know, same thing at wide receiver. We got a bunch of good wideouts too. Uh, so for us, it's just um, getting the right guys on the field and putting them in positions to be successful. And you know, the guys that are making big plays are, are the guys that are obviously going to play a little bit more. Absolutely. And one guy that's been just playing really well, and I can't. I'm a little shocked by this. Is Chad Barton? I mean, I knew he had it in him, and he's finally getting his opportunity. He currently has a 17 to one touchdown to interception ratio. How does he maintain such consistent play in just his first year as a starter? Well, I think he's, I think he's, uh, he's poised. I mean, I don't think I think he's level-headed. I don't think uh, he has any too much, too highs or too lows. I think, you know, he takes things in stride. Uh, I think he's got a command of the offense at this point, point. Um, and he's uh, he's patient and uh, he knows when to get rid of the ball and can move around enough to to help him. I think this week showed that. You know, I think that Millersville came out with a with a game plan to really, you know, force the issue in the run game, and uh, we were able to respond. But you know, they're playing man and took away some things in the passing game, and Chad was able to tuck it and run, and I think he rushed for like sixty yards or something like yeah. that. Yeah, he had the other sixty <laughs> It'd be yards. Surprising, <laughs> he's not a guy that's gonna that's gonna tear it up on the ground, but he's gonna do enough to to move the sticks and, and to manage the game, and uh, I think he's done well so far. Right, yeah, he he takes what the defense gives him, that's, and that's great. And we'll say uh, just one thing we also have to mention, you know, this is your first year. Now that we're halfway through the regular season, how much more are comfortable are you here as head coach? Um, I think I'm, I'm, I think I'm good. I, I, you know, I I feel great. I got I, I really like the kids. Uh, I like the coaching staff. I like Kutztown. It's a great place. Uh, like I said in the beginning, you know, ever since I started here, it's been nothing but. Um, Nothing but ease for me um, with uh, working and and dealing with uh, administrators and faculty and, and students and student athletes. It's been great, and uh, you know, um, winning obviously makes it a lot better. <laughs> and uh, we've been able to win, uh, you know, more than we've lost to this point, and we just got to continue to get better every week. And now we're into the uh, meat grinder of the season, starting uh, Thursday night. Right, and I will be looking forward to that. The game will be broadcast live on KU TV at six or five p.m. And another thing we have to say is we this would we'd kind of be nitpicking, but the last two weeks have been practically flawless. You know, one-sided wins by the Golden Bears. But what if you if you had to you know look at the film, what would you want to improve on the most from those past two games? Well, I think there's some areas. Obviously, you're looking to, you know, we tell our kids all the time that we're chasing perfection. You know, um, are you ever going to be perfect in anything that you do? No, we're not going to be perfect. But as long as we're chasing that and, and working towards that goal, you know, we're getting the best out of all our kids. So obviously there were some spots there that we need to improve on. I think some of the penalties, um, especially the, you know, the false starts, the offsides, the things that happen pre-snap um, are in our control uh, more than anything. And that, that's got to that's got to be picked up on, I think, um, uh, the other thing that we need to work on is, uh, you know, there's still some some plays that we left out on the field, both sides of the ball. You know, obviously we we gave up a big run uh, that we just didn't fit right, and uh, you know, some missed tackles here or there uh, against maybe a better opponent uh, could cost us. Um, so obviously, you know, we're we're playing a, the number ninth ranked team in the country this week. It's a little bit different than than playing the last two teams that we've played. No disrespect to, to Cheney and Millersville. But By all means. This is a, this is a different different animal we have Thursday. Right. It's the, these, are the, pretty much, these are the you know yearly heavyweights of the conference, and that's for sure. But you have to think that with how they've been playing the past two weeks, they've got to you know, be real 
the morale has got to be very high. But you know, and like you mentioned, perfection. What do you do to make sure the guy to avoid complacency in the locker room? Well, there won't be any of that. I mean, I, I don't know if there's anything that you do. I think it's just the mindset of an athlete, you know, um, at least the good ones. You know, obviously there are some guys out there that have a great attitude uh, and those with great attitudes understand the importance of, of hard work and preparation and and um, to take every opportunity um, that they get and, and to embrace that opportunity. And uh, we've got a lot of great kids that are doing that. You know, and you might have a couple kids, their attitude's not right, you know, and uh, they may feel that way. And um, obviously uh, that's not that's not where we're at right now. I think uh, um, it's a long season. You know, you can't let any opportunity slip by. I don't care who you're playing. You know, you've got to play your best. And uh, always tell the kids, you know, we're, you know, it's not we're not playing Cheney. We're not playing Millersville. We're not playing Westchester or Bloomsburg. You know, we don't care about, you know, who we're playing. All we care about is, is who we are and what we can do. Um, and I think that's how our locker room feels. I think if we if we take care of what we can do, you know, we can win out. But it, it's on us. And if we play up to our ability, um, we've got that opportunity in front of us. Let's embrace it and let's get after it. I love them. I love that, man, that mindset. And now we'll just end on this. Westchester is this weekend. What will be the key to defeating them? Well, obviously – you know, like I said earlier, t- turnovers are going to be huge. I think uh, both teams are, are, if you look at statistically, both teams and you break them down, um, they're, besides the record, um, you know, touchdowns against and touchdowns for are very similar. You know, I think they've thrown for 19 touchdowns and seven of those went for over probably 40 yards. We've thrown for, I believe, about 17. 17 I think touchdowns. we had about eight that were big plays. You know, same thing in the running game. So they're, they're, we're, we've been a big play offense um, to this date, and uh, Westchester's a big play offense to this date. Both are able to score a lot of points on the defensive side. Um, they've been a little bit more stingy than we have. Uh, we've given up a couple more big plays, um, you know, but I think it, it's going to come down to the kicking game. You know, who can make some hay in that game is going to be huge. Uh, they've been able to uh, – Score two touchdowns in the kicking game this year. They've blocked a punt for a touchdown. They've returned a kick for a touchdown. You know, we've blocked a punt for a touchdown. Um, we've got to continue to do better covering kicks. Um, I mean, that's going to be huge. I think field goal wise, uh, Alec Rosenfeld has done a great job since yes. inserted into the into that position. Um, he's going to be big because we're going to need him. Uh, their kicker is going to be big because they're going to need him. Hopefully, we do a good job defensively and, and force them to kick when they're in the red zone. So. I mean, kicking game's going to be huge, and obviously turnover margin's going to be huge. And then, you know, it comes down to the players. You know, uh, you know, big players make big plays in big games. That's the bottom line. You know, and these guys have an opportunity to come out Thursday night, represent, you know, Kutztown University, represent their teammates, and uh, show everybody what they're made of. So, I mean, these guys are fired up, and uh, we should be ready to go. Well, I'm excited myself, and it's, you know, your secondary will have a lot their hands full with a very potent passing offense. You know, <laughs> it is the top it's the top secondary in the PSAC right now, and they're going to be put to test. All right, well, Coach, thank you very much for coming on the show. I know you have a lot of work to do. I'm going to let you go. All right, go KU. That's right, go KU. We'll be right back with more KU Live after this. It's Telescopic Topics, a look into the world above us. What was the first spacecraft to be successfully launched by the United States? Hello, I'm Samantha Biastri. The Explorer 1 was launched on January 31, 1958. This was the first successfully launched United States spacecraft. This mission followed the first two satellites the previous year, which were the Soviet Union's Sputnik 1 and 2. This began the Cold War space race. The space race was a competition in the mid to late 20th century between the Soviet Union and the United States for supremacy in space exploration. The Explorer 1 carried instruments for the study of cosmic rays, micrometeorites, and for monitoring the satellite's temperature. The Explorer 1 was the first spacecraft to successfully detect the durable trapped radiation in the Earth's magnetosphere. The data that was collected was transmitted continuously to NASA's headquarters but collecting the data from outer space was only limited to those times 
when the spacecraft passed over the appropriately equipped receiving stations on the ground. The data was also processed slowly due to the fact that the satellite's constant spinning transmitted into a lower kinetic energy state. A kinetic energy state is the energy that an object possesses due to its motion. The mission ended on March 31, 1970, when the Explorer 1 burned up upon re-entry over the Pacific Ocean. The Explorer 1 is the first of the long-running Explorer program by NASA. An identically constructed flight backup of the Explorer 1 is on display at the Smithsonian Institution's National Air and Space Museum, Milestones of Flight Gallery in Washington, D.C. Telescopic Topics, a look into the world above us. Stay tuned to KUR for more telescopic topics, and for more information, or to hear this segment again, click on the Telescopic Topics icon on the KUR website at www.kutztown.edu slash KUR. Telescopic Topics is a production of the KU Physical Sciences Department and is recorded by KU Astronomy students in the studios of KUR. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time. Radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR Kutztown. Hey everyone, welcome back to KU Live. The time right now is about 2.18 p.m. Eastern Time, and we just had Coach Jim Clements of the KU football team on for a good interview about this Thursday's showdown with PSAC rival and nationally ranked Westchester University. I have to say that's very that's very excited. The whole school should be reeling about this. The football team is already um, one win away from matching last year's win total. They're doing an outstanding job to start the season right now, and they're really just clicking on all cylinders. Their offense is in the top five in the country in the conference, and their defense in the top five in the conference. Their quarterback Chad Barton is just playing astounding. He, I think, right now he leads. I think he's second in the conference in touchdown passes, and he has the best touchdown to interception ratio in all of Division Two. And that's just great because this kid was when he first arrived, he was buried at the depth chart, and he played behind Kevin Morton, the greatest quarterback to ever play here, and then. You know, the next year after Morton left, a freshman beat him and four other guys out. So then he found himself at the, you know, holding a clipboard. But then he just worked his way up and he won the job in camp. There was another guy that was supposed to um, have the job, but then Barton just played really well and only one guy could start and Barton got the job. And he's really, it's, he's capitalized on it. And uh, that's great for him because I just like to see stories like that. When kids join a college football team as a freshman, you know, it's expected that you're not going to get on the field right away. You, you know, it's very competitive at this level. You know, you you may have been all league in high school, but everyone else on that team was likely first team all league and first team all area. Some even were even on the all state team for all you may know. So that's great to see him work. It shows that, you know, he may be just because your underclassman doesn't play doesn't mean you won't see the field. And he's finally gotten his chance and he's leading this team on a really good chance at a redemptive season to get the team back into relevance, per se, for lack of a better term, because ever since um, three years ago when I first came here, the football team was at the, they were they won the conference championship for the first time in school history and set new school records for wins and numerous other records. And that's great to see because this program has, you know, been on the cusp, on the periphery of greatness, and they finally achieved that. And then they've kind of just, after that, they've kind of leveled out and been on the middle. And this year... They have been just playing impeccably on both sides of the ball, except for their right now they're three and two and they're scoring. They're having no trouble scoring the ball. They've scored have over a hundred, I believe, one hundred and twenty-eight to seven is the number of point, the way they've outscored their opponents the last year and or the last two games. And that's just amazing to see those kinds of numbers be put up offensively. And it shows that even though pretty much every coach is no longer there from the year they won the championship, they're still putting up the same numbers using the same offensive system. Which means that it works, and in all in all elements, you know, the running game has been great, the passing game has been great, and I would love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to hear what you guys think. You know, what do you think is going to happen in the game? You know, it's it may be Division Two football, but these are two of the best teams in the country. It's going to be a really good game. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Feel free, feel free to give us a call at six one zero six eight three four eight five nine. That's six one zero six eight three four eight five nine. Would love to hear your thoughts. There's a lot going on at the university right now, and. Now to another subject, we do have, um, uh, just looking off the Daily Brief we do today, right now on the Daily Brief for a little update, we had the off-campus housing fair, and I don't remember that happening, that um, going on before I could have used that, because I know that 
one thing about despite this being a very small town, it's very difficult to find off-campus housing. There's a website, but it's not as updated as frequently as it should be. And this is a great, um, I never thought, I know why they wouldn't want this because landlords, you know, this is a great way for them to, for lack of a better term, recruit to find tenants and to, you know, meet students saying, hey, I have, you know, such these properties. It's a great way for them to, you know, find students to find off campus housing because I believe, let's see, 45%, I believe, I believe just over half live on campus. But that still means that almost half live off campus, meaning, that they're, you know, these landlords could use some tenants. And an off-campus housing fair like this is a great way for students to find off-campus housing because I think off-campus housing is, I think it's better to live off-campus than on-campus. Nothing against on-campus. That was great. I had two great years living on-campus. They took very good care of me on-campus. and But off-campus housing is kind of more realistic. You, you know, you live on your own. You have to take care of yourself. And that's something that we really have to, you know, you got to teach yourself and college is about teaching yourself to be independent and there's no better way to be independent than learning to live off campus and that's something that i believe a lot of the students should look at i understand it can be sometimes a little pricier but they have deals and landlords you know if you find a good landlord and really get you know pick their brain on how what their policies are and their leases you should find a good place for yourself because there's a lot of great places to live in this town you know there's um main street has tons of houses there are plenty of apartment complexes there's the edge which is a beautiful apartment complex that is always filled up and always is on high demand there's also Saucony commons commons on normal avenue and there are other streets that have houses and apartments to live in there are plenty of places to live because um, this town may only have 4,000 people but it also has a you know a lot of a lot more houses to hold more people because of the fact that there are 10,000 students going here so that's great but another thing that's going on, the Daily Brief moving on at 11, we also had the Finding Internships Fair at MSU 250. I would have liked to have attended, but unfortunately I had a meeting for this radio station and other commitments there. But that's something I think we should all look at because I, I always hold this contention that college gets you ready for, you know, gives you the requisite skills, but you don't get to apply them unless you have really during your college years unless you have an internship. And I know I understand some majors don't have internships, but a majority of them do. And this is a great place to meet people, make connections, and find, you know, a place to maybe intern in the summer. And some of these are paid, you know, and some of the pay, some internships pay better than a part-time job or, or job, full-time jobs. They, you know, because they're an actual business and, you know, it's in the corporate world for some majors. And these are really beneficial for you to learn how things work because that's what happened to me. A, oh, I'm... Oh, I just got news from my producer. We have a, a phone call coming in. Okay. Uh, well, I will, hello, are you there? Hello? Yes, hello? Hello, who's this? Yes, my name is Mildred. Hello, uh, Mildred. Hi, what's your question? Oh, I don't have a question. I, I just wanted to call and, and say that I, I enjoy the show. I was trying to call last week when that other young fella was on the air, but the phones were all busy the whole show. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, our phones, last funny story, last week, Mildred, I, I apologize, our phones were... um. They weren't working for some reason. Our phone lines were dead. And wow. I'm sorry about that. But thank you very much. It's good to know that I have some listeners out there. I just wanted to say, because you were talking about uh, the university and the football team. And oh, by, by the way, uh, I live up in the nursing home up here. And I listen on my TV all the time. And I just wanted to say that, you know, Cooktown University sometimes gets a bad rap. The old people complain about you kids. But... You kids really do a good job. I have nothing but good things to say about you guys, and I listen to the radio station all the time. Oh, thank you very much. That means a lot. Yeah, and we we respect the community. I, you know, I, I, there are some great people that I li I've lived nearby that are full time residents. When I lived on Greenwich Street last year, that's great. Do you so you live in town? Yes, I live at the of the home. I'm sorry. Where? I live up at the nursing home. Oh, how about that? Well, that's great. Uh, what nursing home? I didn't know there was a nursing home in Kutztown. Outside of town, the manor. Oh, I know where that is. That's great. Oh, how about that? Well, thank yeah. you very much for calling. So, um, uh, to channel twenty four, you can listen on the KU That's yeah, that's great. We love we love uh, as an electronic media major myself, I love hearing that we have you know a following out there because that's something that you know we need to learn about is that in our business it's great to have view listeners and viewers like yourself, and we really appreciate that. Yeah, well, that's all I need. I just want to tell you you're doing a good job. Thank you very much. So just uh, while you're here, um, I would like to know, what do you like about the show? What's your favorite part? What would you like changed? We'd love your feedback. Uh, well, you know, you talk about
about sports a lot. I'm not a huge sports fan, but I do follow it. But I, I like talking politics and current events, and I just like anything. Whatever you talk about, Sonny, it's fine with me. Oh, that's fine. And actually, uh, I understand that. Uh, sports is what I've kind of done a lot of, but I do also, this year, I've been, a lot of uh, the beginning of the fir- our first month was packed full of um, public figures in the university to talk about, uh, to expand our scope of discussion. Because I understand that, you know, sports, it's something that only a certain number of people like, but we also have a, we like to talk about school issues, right? That's what it's a community issue show is what this is about. And we actually got to talk to um, a politician that I made a connection with in Philadelphia. He works for the Bentman Trust for American Voters. Have you ever heard of that? I heard that show. Yeah, that was a good show. Oh, you did? Yes. And thank you. Yeah. And that was last week when I couldn't get through. It was. Oh, we would have loved to have had you call in. That's great. So have you ever tried to call in before? Uh, no, last week was my first time because I listened to that WEEU a lot and I recognized that Nick guy and I thought it was neat that he was now on your show too. So yeah, I listen to you. I listen to you guys. I, I'm old school. I don't have a TV. I just listen to the radio all day. Oh, that's great. Hey, that's great. I love radio, and I hope it never does fade away. I don't ever think it will. And yeah, Nick, yeah. Um, the way it works is Nick's going to just to inform you, Nick will be here, I believe, t- um, once or twice every month once my producer gets back from his meeting. He can probably confirm that, but he will be on the show at least once each of the months this semester to talk. And the guy, he, he's a very smart man, very eloquent speaker, and he's coming on to actually give some advice to myself as a for future journalist myself and just how to make a better radio show. And he's been very helpful. His advice has been has been sage advice to hear from that guy. Well, you're doing a really good job, and I just love the station, okay? Thank you very much, Mildred. You have a good day. All right, have a nice day. Bye-bye. All right. All right. Well, that's great to hear a caller come in and... I want to thank you very much to Mildred for calling in. That's great to hear some feedback, and I'd love to hear from everyone else. You know, any thoughts on the show? You want me? To, any, who do you want me to talk to? That's what I like to do. I like to, you know, pick the brains of these people here because this university is full of people that are, in a way, they're almost pundits. They are. They, a lot of these people are professors that are, you know, being paid good money to teach this certain subject. You just you can infer that they know a lot about it, and if there are issues in the world that pertain towards it, when a lot of them do. You know, we have someone who knows about this right in at our fingertips. We just have to make one email, to go to one office somewhere on campus, and we can learn about that. And that's great because that's one thing I really want to expand on. As I do know that I, part of me, I hosted, for those who don't know, I hosted Between the Lines, a um, weekly sports show for KUTV where we talked about, you know, covered the interviewed student athletes and coaches weekly, and I cannot host that this semester because of just a, to overlapping classes, but I still want to do part of that because I do have a good long-standing ties with the athletic department here, and they trust me, and I trust them, and I love talking to them and their athletes. And the one reason, main reason I have them on is because the athletes deserve it, and they love it. They love the publicity because this is Division Two. It's they're not going to be on ESPN all the time. They're not going to be, you know, in the national headlines or in the Philadelphia Inquirer, really. And just to have someone, you know, acknowledge. What their accomplishments? That's just great. That's just really heartwarming for them. That's something that I really like to do because, you know, the, and I'll stop after this because the sports I cover the sports because it's leisurely. You know, it's a break from the real world. That's what I like the most about it. And I'm gonna always try and keep a little sports on my show for the rest of the semester. Maybe once every couple of weeks, or maybe once every two weeks, I'll have a, a coach and a player in. But that's great. And another thing I'd like to bring up uh, that we have today is um, we have tonight a student recital at Schaefer Auditorium, and I've. I've yet to see those due to my schedule, but I know that it's been a very, 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 really solid music program down there. And I know that, you know, the band, they do an outstanding job on football games all the time. And that's something that if students, if you like that kind of music, by all means, go down there. That's something that we should all listen to. But right now we're going to take a quick commercial break. Stay tuned for more KU Live. KUR, the radio voice of Kutztown University and Golden Bears football, is your winning combination this fall. KUR is now your official radio source for all KU football broadcasts on the road. I'm Matt Santos. Join me live from the booth in my 23rd season of Covering the Team as my special guest and I bring you each and every exciting play from the 2014 Road Slate. We'll be at Slippery Rock, Gannon, Millersville, East Stroudsburg, Shippensburg, and Clarion wherever the Golden Bears go. 
All broadcasts will begin 10 minutes before kickoff. That's KU Football on the Road, all this season on KUR, your exclusive radio home for Kutztown University Golden Bears football. Attention December graduates. KUSSI is sponsoring the Fall 2014 Graduation Festival on Tuesday, October 28th from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. in the multi-purpose room of the Student Union Building. The Graduation Festival is a one-stop shop for all of your December graduation needs. You will be able to verify the status of your graduation application, purchase your cap and gown, receive graduation tickets, order your class ring and announcements, and much more. The festivities will include giveaways and a chance to win one of our great graduation gift packages. All December graduates must attend the Fall 2014 Graduation Festival. If you are unable to attend this event or would like more information, please contact Matt Lothar, the Student Services Coordinator for KUSSI at 484-646-4338 prior to the event. Congratulations, it's time. KUR, the radio voice of Kutztown University. KUR, Kutztown. Hey everyone, welcome back to KU Live. The time right now is about 2.33 p.m. Eastern Time. And we just are coming back to a show where we're trying to really connect with our listeners a little more this show. Um, we actually just had our first caller of the semester, Mildred. I want to thank her very much for calling. That was very kind. She gave very kind words to us. And I appreciate that. And if she's still listening, I would love for her to call in again sometime. I'll make sure we talk about something that we want to appeal to our listeners. Is You know, this is about you it isn't just about us we want to talk about stuff that the community wants to speak about again because this is a community issue show if there's an issue we want to discuss we certainly can use this as a forum for it so that's something that i'd really like to uh, build upon as we uh, throughout the semester and i can speak with my producer about that but moving on we have a lot we just for those who missed we had head coach jim clements come in of the kustan university football team they'll be playing nationally ranked westchester university this saturday at 2 p.m and that's going to be a great game i I suggest everyone should try and make it out. The game will be broadcast live on KUTV through the electronic media department. And it's going to be very interesting, and there's a lot going to be going on. And uh, moving on to the Daily Brief, one thing I wanted to also bring up uh, today, there was the finding internships in MSU 250 right above us, and that's something that I also wanted to bring up, is that I really want to hit on the point that internships are so important in this credentialist society we live in. And it's i understand you know it's not all about just getting the degree that's something that a lot of a lot more students have in this era that we're in but also a lot of them a lot of employers want to see actual experience that are pertained towards your field of study in some way it could be loosely based or it could be strictly based and that's something that i learned this summer myself um i had an internship that centered towards my major. I worked at a radio station outside of Philadelphia called More FM 101.1, formerly known as B101.1. And it was, I learned how the business worked. It was, I worked in promotions. I didn't get to help much with the broadcasting aspect of it, but I got to work in how the, the distribution of, you know, products with uh, vendors we sh- we are working with. And also we were trying, you know, I learned about grassroots marketing. That's what we did. It was a grassroots campaign to sort of promote appropriately our new logo for contemporary adult and and how we're cha- they changed the colors on it and everything and it was a really big movement that we had to do because if people that's one thing promotions are so important with radio because not everyone listens to it as much there's television and in order to get people to listen to the radio you need to you know build a following and we already, they already do have a big following 101.1 is the top independent radio station in the entire country and yet by changing their name to from B101 to More FM, people aren't going to know what that is. And you have to, that's why promotions are so important. And it's something we do at this radio station here. We're having our promotions set up soon. I can look that up. It's our next break. But at KUR, we really want to build, especially on this show, I really want to build appeal to our listeners more because it's something where I'd love to talk to just you. It's not about me interviewing, you know, um, my guests all the time. I would love to talk to our guests and if you have any questions any comments on what's going on in the university i'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions just call 610-683-4859 that's 610-683-4859 i would love to hear your thoughts and concerns cries for helps anything like that i would love to hear it because there's always stuff going on there's they, they do a very good job of posting what any new news regarding the university and they really i have to also want to thank student government student government has done a lot 
for not just us, but for this university as a whole. They've gotten concerts to come in. I want to thank our uh, previous student body president, Nick Mbezzi, who's out and running and starting his career as a politician. I'm sure he's going to do a great job in that. They also, just for the radio station, I might as well break the news that we were approved for a new soundboard, which I assume will be installed over winter break and probably put in place of this. And that's great. It shows that they're looking out for us. And just that student, it just shows that our student government, they they work for us. They're not paid for what they do. They work a lot of, it's a full-time job almost, aside from school. They work for us to help us out. If you want something changed to make it more convenient for yourself as a student, they will fight for you. And there's right now they have a, they have something for voting. We had last week, a few weeks ago, we had um, Leah Caselia from the um, Office of Student Involvement start with Turbo Vote, and Turbo Vote, um, they had the student government body in order to promote it. They wanted to use to show that the um, I'm drawing a blank here. Uh, what happened was this, I'll just give I'll start over. The story that happened was the voting building was moved from the opaque field house on campus to the Maxitoni Township building. So what TurboVote and the student government body did was that they started um, to deliver an almost, you know, blatant and somewhat sarcastic message that, you know, it's way too far away for some stu- for most students to go to and that we have, um, and that some students don't have cars. And so what they're going to do is they walked, f- I believe, five miles up and back and with cameras and recorded it to show how and they went straight up, they walked up a highway just to show that how long and far away it is and how inconvenient it is for some people. And it just shows, you know, great. that's great for them to show that they're really fighting for us and do, putting in all that time. And I want to thank them for that. And uh, also, Mike, I had uh, remembered my producer's finally yep, out. I'm off my phone call. Very busy. I know. I had that mixed up when you showed me the phone. I thought, oh, I'm going to talk to my phone call. Like, yeah, oh, I was no, trying to tell a, you had a phone call. We have yeah. a phone call now. All right. Well, from now on. And I that, used to get phone calls. Yeah, I, I got phone great. calls. Yeah. I want to thank her That's again. wonderful. I want to thank yeah. Mildred again for calling in. So uh, she lists, the reason she called in was she um, listens to Nick on WEEU a lot. Uh huh. And he will be coming in, I believe, at least once a month. Or is it twice a month? Yeah. I th- well, he's coming. Actually, yeah, I didn't even uh, update. I thought, thought I did. Maybe I didn't. He's coming back next week. And then he'll be back two weeks after that. So probably we're going to try to do twice a month. Twice a month. That's yeah. And that sounds great. And he's a, just a very eloquent man, very good speaker. And he has you just tell his experience from that and how knowledgeable he is. Yep. And that's really going to help us and, and also, you know, it'll help myself. He's a, He really knows the intricacies of the business. He knows how to get to develop a following. And a good thing is, the great thing we got from our caller is that she said that we, you know, we talk about sports a little too much. No, no, we don't. A yeah, lot. I really couldn't pay attention too much to what she was saying because I was on the phone, but it sounded like she was saying something along the lines of the university gets some bad press, but generally you're pretty good kids. Yeah, because yeah. we're kids. We're young. We're in our 20s. Yeah. And, you know, we're still students. We're going. We know what we're here for. And, right. Yeah, and that's great to hear from that. And I really appreciate her kind words. And she did say that, you know, she likes to talk about politics and current events, and if that's something that will appeal to our listeners, we can by all means do that. And Nick's coming on sure. next week, so Mildred, if you're still listening, Nick will be on next week from 2 to 3, and he'll be talking about uh, probably a number of things, so that's great to know. All right, well, we'll take a quick commercial break. We'll stay tuned for more KU Live. Hi, hon. I thought you were coming home early. Yeah. What's the matter? What happened? And I realized today just how much I really love you. What do you mean? I almost got killed today. Oh, my God. I was rushing home to catch the game. There was a train coming. I thought I could beat it. Oh, Billy. I was just about to go around the gate. Something made me slam on the brakes. Oh, thank God. My coffee went everywhere. I'm so glad you're all right. It wasn't worth the risk never see you again. Never smell your hair. I don't even say that. I'll never see you walk. Oh. I love you. Oh, I'm sorry. It takes a mile for a train to stop. Don't try to beat a train or someone you love will get hurt. Look, listen, and live. This message brought to you by Operation Lifesaver and this station.
Did you know that 80% of KU students don't binge drink? Hanging posters again? Do you think that poster is really true? Yes, it is true. I am a KU health ambassador and familiar with the audit. KU students participate in alcohol screening each year. We use the alcohol use disorder identification test. It is a simple way to screen and identify people who are at risk of developing alcohol problems. We have learned that the majority of students are taking care of business and focusing on academics. You know, most of my friends don't drink, so I guess what this poster is saying is true. Would you like to get a group of friends together for a bite to eat? Sounds great. Text me later. Could sound living neighbor to neighbor. Funded by the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board. Looking for exceptional research and fieldwork opportunities? The Chincoteague Bay Field Station is an environmental education facility located on the eastern shore of Virginia. We offer a variety of college courses each summer ranging from geology and biology to literature and marine science. For years, Kutztown University students have come to the field station to participate in cutting-edge research and gain practical experiences that help them secure a job in their field. Find out how you can get involved today at cbfieldstation.org. That's cbfieldstation.org. KUR, the radio voice of Kutztown University. KUR, Kutztown. Hey everyone, welcome back to KU Live. The time right now is about 2.43 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm your host, Steve Majeri, and we're just getting back into the swing of things. We uh, had a Coach Jim Clements on here to give a nice preview of what to expect on Thursday against Westchester. It's going to be two top teams in their conference and two top uh, offenses in the conference and two top defenses in the conference. So it's going to be a really, really hard-fought game, and I look forward to seeing it. And another thing I just thought I'd bring up is uh, here on the Daily a Brief, um, there is one thing I would like to promote that on Thursday – there's going to be a lot of going on on Thursday, there, aside from the football game. There's also the Red Carpet Affair for the Electronic Media Department. For anyone who's interested in where this comes from, the radio department here, anyone who has an interest in ever you know, getting a radio show, it's quite simple. You just have to go to the radio club meetings. They're 11 a.m. every day in the Rickenbach Learning Center. And you can also follow us on Facebook or on uh, K United. There's a lot that goes on. And the ones who really handle all this are the electronic media department. We're not, not directly affiliated with it, but our technology is run through them, or, and we have all the same people teach the same stuff that we learn how to use here. So all the skills I've learned when using the soundboard have come from learning what I've learned as an electronic media major. And it's a major that I don't want to use this show. I'm not going to spend much time promoting my major, but it's something that I feel that needs to be done in some manner because uh, there's a... Uh, it's a very small major. Not a lot of people know we exist, and a lot of people that are interested and in who do their homework and want to enter the field of broadcasting or television or anything like that, they come in, and sometimes they're told that uh, that the major doesn't even exist, and or if and they tell them to go join communications. And I don't know who says that, but a lot of people have told me, "Oh, I was you know, I joined the communications major because I want to do this." I'm like, "No, you should be joining." electronic media to join this because you learn how to use all the technology and learn how the business works and that's something I should you know just mention because the electronic media department has just been it's such a great and I wish I could make the red carpet affair but it's such a great event it's where we show the freshman students that's that's our we have a great closing ratio this place sells itself going in and seeing all of the the great the amazing technology the millions of dollars this university allocates to us I'm so thankful for that and the fact that you get hands-on experience with this makes the electronic media department here at Kutztown University one of the best in all the East Coast, I think. I, I, I honestly believe it because a lot of other stool, schools excuse me, have rules where they don't even get to, students don't even get to touch the equipment until maybe their junior year after they complete some gen eds and some other intro-level um, lecture-style classes. But in this department, not as much of that. There are lecture classes, but you also learn you know, hands-on because that's what is ultimately going to help you. You want to learn how to use a sound mixer or a camera, you're going to have to go out and play with it. You're going to have to learn what buttons to press and how to use everything, what to adjust and everything like that. Because that's what's going, that's going to help you more than reading a book on how to do that. You know, that shows why, you know, reading manuals can help only to a certain extent. And that's just something that I think anyone who's interested in, you know, even learning about how this major works, feel free to stop by the top floor of the Rickenbach Learning Center and I'm sure they would, anyone would love to talk to you and they would could go on about how great this major is and how surreal of a college experience it's been. And another event going on, we have, let's see if we have anything else coming up. Nothing so far, but October is always a very busy month. It's a great time when we have, you know, the fall always in mid-swing. It's been a great um, 
you know, very beautiful fall so far. And it's just been, the universities have looked really beautiful. And I know the one thing we've always, this university has always gotten awards for its groundskeeping. And I just want to say that, you know, I really appreciate what Dr. Vargas and the rest of the university does to maintain making this university look so beautiful. And it, it's just during the, when the sun's out, it's a great place to walk around, a great place to just be outside. And they do a great job in that. And Oh, we have some open time right now. I'd love to hear from our listeners. We had one caller in today, our first call of the semester. Just if you have any thoughts about the university, concerns, I'd love to talk about it. That's what this show's for. Call in at 610-683-4859. That's 610-683-4859. I would love to hear your thoughts because this show I'm talking about, you know, appealing to our viewers. That's something that I feel that we should, that any show should do. You know, that's because they're the one in the real world when it's a business, they're the ones who, that's how... You get your ratings and how you, you know, people make their money. And it's not, that's not the reason we do that, that I'm doing it. I just like to, you know, I love to just, you know, get to appeal, get to connect with the community here and talk about issues because that's something we have a voice and there's a reason there's a first amendment, even though we're students and just, you know, and if this thing we do discuss does not reflect the views of the university, it's simply subjective. But we, that's one great thing about this, this show is that if there's an issue in the university and you want to talk about it, feel free to contact us. We can have you on. And if you want, if you have, you know, the, your facts right about the issue, feel free to talk to us. You know, we can, that's what we have to do is we have to make it public first. If it's just one or two students who believe in that there's an issue, then it's not as apparent and the other university has much bigger fish to fry. But if you make it a big fish to fry, then the university may take a closer look at it. And we work a lot in consortium with the student government, bo- the student government body, and they often are the ones who, you know, will, will do the paperwork and talk to the administrators here and, you know, start get the process going and fixing that. Because there's always been a lot of issues that um, the university, I feel, should maybe change a little. Like one issue I mentioned last semester, and I wanted to talk to our student government body president about this, was that printing in color. And I had an issue like this last semester, and it's where in the library, you are only allowed to, you have to pay a dollar per page in order to print something in color. And oh, it, that doesn't seem like much, but see if you have a big portfolio you have to print out. And I had a, um, I was doing a media kit, a media kit for my writing for public relations class. And a Professor Bristowski, listen, we had a great interview with uh, you last weekend, and I'm, thank you very much for that. But um, in the class, we had to print, I don't know, about maybe you know, eight or nine pages or something, but, and it was in color. And I understand ink cartridges cost more, but I mean, we're paying thousands of dollars here. The school makes millions and millions of dollars every year. They get funded by Harrisburg and a lot of, you know, not a lot. I know not a lot of, um, projects that have to be printed have to be in color. So why would they charge for that? Something that isn't even in high demand. Because for some people, you know, we're college students. Some of students are going to have loans and are you not, they don't have a lot of extra cash on themselves. And say if they have a, you know, say a 20 something, you know, por- page portfolio they have to print out, that's, that's $20. And that's something some students may not have that kind of, that, you know, $20 to just spare and throw out for printing. And what if they have a major like that, or graphic design or something, where they have to print out from the library and they have to do that on a consistent basis? That could really drain their wallet. And, I just don't understand how that, you know, why the university would have to mandate, you know, charging us just to print in color. Because I have a color printer, and I'm lucky I don't have to print in color not a lot, but some majors may potentially have to do that. But that's just one issue. Stuff like that. The students, I'm not the voice of reason. I simply like to open up a discussion. And if the students, faculty, anyone wants to talk about it, by all means, call in. I'd love to hear your thoughts. You can give us a call at 610-683-4859. That's 610-683-4859. Because I'd love to hear what you have to say on this issue or other issues because this is a community issues show. We're here to talk about what's going on and not just the university, but the entire town of Kutztown. Because in we're very we're in one and the same. We the university is what runs the town and the town also helps us because a lot forty five percent of our I believe forty five percent of our students, around half of us live off campus. So we help each other. It's hand in hand and it's mutualism and that's why if something happens, it could affect us and potentially affect the rest of the borough as well. So that's something that I'd love to hear from just a student, faculty, or even a full-time resident. We had a full-time resident call in, and I want to thank her very much for calling in. She gave very kind words. Her name was Mildred, and uh, if she's still listening, thank you again for your call. Thank you for your kind words. And that's what we like to hear. You know, if these airwaves don't just, they expand beyond just the university. They go into town, and they, go, they can be listened to throughout the Lehigh Valley. 
And that's something that, you know, if anyone has any concerns, you can, you can call us from anywhere. You could be listening to the show online. If you are, thank you very much. We'd love to hear your thoughts on anything pertaining to the university or to any current events. I do my best to keep up to date with it. And uh, there's a lot going on right now with whether it's the voting issues in Scotland that are still trying to find things out. ISIS is a big issue. You know, I want to expand the community issues beyond here because I understand there's only so much we can talk about. And I want to expand to more to more people. You know, I know that a lot of people have a lot of strong thoughts about what's going on in the world right now. And this is, you know, that's a talk radio. It's not just me. Talk, I, just, I don't want to just be talking to myself. I want my listeners to call in and give me thoughts on whatever they think we'd like to talk about. And if you have something interesting to share, by all means, give us a call. I would love to hear that. I'm very open to any kind of, you know, interesting story you may have had or in the university, your life. We would love to hear that. So give us a call at 610-683-4859. That's 610-683-4859. And uh, because that's just what I really want to accomplish in this last semester. This is my last semester before I go on my internship, and I want to take this radio show to new heights before I am. I must depart, and that's something we've done for the first month, and now we're kind of just taking a break from it. We just want to ease up a little, but I'm sure next week when Mr. Nick Lawrence from WEEU from Reading comes in to talk with us, there's going to be a lot of big news going on, a lot to discuss, and I'd love to hear from the community. Uh, so if you want to have anything you want to share with us, just give us a call at 610-683-4859. 610-683-4859. But there is one issue that I think for the, why not? We could just say that uh, I mentioned how they um, there's an issue with the library that's been going on that I'm going to talk to. I would like to maybe talk with uh, our student body president about this maybe next week, is that to print, to print in color at this university you have to pay a dollar per page, and some students may have a lot of um, a, a large portfolio they have to print out that could, you know, cost a lot of money. And that's something that the that they may not have the extra money to do that. You know, some students may have to make every dollar they make may have to go towards their tuition, and the university should be able to, you know, to help them out in some way. And if they say that, oh well, not a lot of students are really printing in color either way, then why charge them for it? You know, that's if you're not really hemorrhaging your ink then why, you know, make students pay for it? But I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on this. If any students are listening, here's the question I'd like to probe to you in our last few minutes. Do you think it's fair that they charge for color printing? And if so, why? And if why not, why not? I would love to hear from you at 610-683-4859. 610-683-4859. Because that's just something where the university, they have a lot of ways to, you know, our tuition goes, it gets spread out in a lot of different resources, understandably, whether it's salaries of the professors, you know, the um, maintaining buildings, maintenance, uh, groundskeeping, our student activity fees go towards a lot. And that's something that, you know, I understand they say, oh, you know, you're not. some people may say, oh, well, this is the Apache schools are the least expensive public state universities in this state because they are, as we said, a state school. But there's much more that students will have to pay instead of that. They have to pay, you know, housing. That's a whole separate fund itself and can be pretty expensive as well depending on where they live students have to pay for other miscellaneous items like food if you're living off campus textbooks are a whole nother or big expenditure you have to make it's a lot and i think that making someone have to pay just to, to use a printer is absurd and that's something that i'm certainly going to bring up with our student body president and that's something i think we should have next week so i understand my producer is very busy right now with meetings but i'll certainly talk to him after this we'll try to get a Joe Scaboria to come into the radio show next week and discuss just an update because we haven't had him in a month and he's been very busy. Our president, Joe Scaboria, has been very busy uh, getting acclimated to the job as student body president. He did it as simply a sophomore, which is amazing. And he's replacing a very, very talented man. And Nick Gimbezi, our former student body president, who's now building his career towards becoming a politician. I'm sure the way he works with us and how he fights for just not just the students, but for the states of Pennsylvania, that's going to be the state of Pennsylvania. That's just going to be really, really beneficial for us in the long run, because that's something that I think that we really should look at is that especially one more thing is what's coming up in the voting, um, the governor race with the all the implications on the education system and the funding for that. That's something that I believe students should vote for. It's something that, you know, where a billion dollars was cut on funding towards education. It led towards overcrowded classrooms and I'm not going to bash Governor Corbett, but that's that's just simply a fact. And it's hurt us. It's caused tuition to spike and more students, it, as a result, 
enrollment has lowered, and that's caused the budgeting to become a mess for the university. Our enrollment dropped by hundreds of students, and now that the university is, is looking for money from somewhere, Harrisburg isn't giving it to them, and there's only one way they can do it. They have to charge it from us, and I've had worries that the education system sort of degenerated into a, nothing more than a business. I don't believe it's there, but with something like this, an epidemic like this happening, where our state schools are looking for places to fund the na- and allocate na- um, appropriate national all the resources to, you know, run this university, they're getting the money has to come from somewhere. And we're the ones paying tuition to go here. And that's only going to cause some more problems in the long run. Long run. But it, I would love to hear your thoughts on this, you know, whether it's what I brought up about the print printing issue in the library or with the um, current issue with the governor race. I would love to hear from you. you know, for the last couple of minutes, number is 610-683-4859. That's 610-683-4859. You know, what are your thoughts? I would love to hear from our listeners. I know we have listeners out there. We're able to get an idea of how many listen, and I'd love to hear from you. We have a lot to discuss here. There's a lot we always like to we like to bring in a wide array of topics on this show because, as, as I'll say again, it's for the umpteenth time. It's a community issue show. We talk about more than just one thing, and we also want it to talk show. We 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 take phone calls. Last week, we unfortunately our phone lines were closed. We got a phone call this week. And if there's any other issues you'd like to talk about, we would like to really you, let you at least bring the issue up here. Because, hey, if you if, if it's insightful, I have connections in the university. I can talk to student government body. Their office is right across the hall from us outside of the radio station. We can go talk to them and bring the issue up. And their meetings are tonight. And I believe, uh, Mike, are the meetings for student government t- uh, Tuesday nights? I should know this. Yes, I do believe they are Tuesdays at five. I believe. Right. Oh, yeah. so that's right after the show. So yeah, that's what Pretty happens. Much, a lot yeah. of the stu- a majority of the student press happens right in a small vicinity. It happens the radio, the newspaper, which I have to do after this, is across the hall from us. Student government body is across from us, and the radio stations here. Yep. And if any news regarding television, the electronic media department is right out the window next to me. So. It's something where if you have an I- something you'd like to bring up, we have news outlets that will easily deliver the message and get the process going to possibly solve that problem or learn more about it. But thank you very much for listening. That's all the time we have. I will see you next week. Nick Lawrence from WEEU and Reading will be joining us to, um, as an extra person to discuss whatever current issues are regarding the university. So be sure to tune in next week at 2 p.m. or in KUR. Have a nice day. It's the top of the hour, and you're listening to the radio voice of...